Hello, everyone. This is Michael at optionsplayers.com. Um, as you know, I'm an options strategy instructor here and run a couple of different classes, uh, Green Goose in particular, as well as Swing Trading. Um, this is part three of a series that I'm putting together on price action patterns. And what I'm going to talk about today are bull pullbacks and bear rallies. Um, you might be familiar with bear rallies under, under another name, um, and it's actually called dead cat, but uh, not really the equivalent on the bull pullback. So I'm just going to call them either bull pullback or bear rally. So first of all, disclaimer, as you know, we're not an advice advisor service. We're not registered investment advisors. Uh, this stuff is educational. You should always check with your, uh, your licensed financial advisor or your tax advisor to determine the suitability of anything uh, that you're doing in the investment world. Uh, do not assume that the methods, techniques, or indicators presented in, in this, um, in this uh, seminar will be profitable or that they're not going to result in losses. Um, you need to know that there's definitely a high degree of risk in trading and uh, we do make losses, but hopefully we make more gains than we make in losses. That's what we call stacking here in options players. So bull pullback. Um, what a bull pullback actually is, is basically it's, it's a reversion of the mean. I know there's been some talk about this in OP and Greg has put it out and there's been some stuff going on with uh, what, what's next Wall Street. But really what this is, is you're in a trend that is up. Uh, you can actually look at the trend and say, oh, wow, there's a moving average and that's then that, that moving average is sloping up. You can pick any one you want, uh, usually uh, something that's maybe uh, a longer, uh, let's say 20, 50, even 100, even 200 days as people use different ones. Uh, now, what happens is that equities or actually any asset class, uh, they generally like to correct overbought conditions um, after strong moves. Uh, before continuing with their dominant trend. So what we need to do is we need to determine what the dominant trend is and then wait for bull pullbacks and we buy the dip. Okay, so this is really dip buy. Uh, bull pullbacks are typically used uh, typically used to define price decrease of 3 to 5% within a bullish trend. Um, you've heard me um, in several of my classes talking about zigzags. And really the size of the pullback is going to be a certain portion of the of the impulse up okay so it's a zig and a zag so you got your zig and your zag and usually this is going to be a pullback of anywhere from let's just say 38.2 to 61.8 percent there's also another number in there 50 percent okay those are fib numbers uh, and they touch whatever moving average you're looking at okay so those sizes are always going to be smaller than the, the previous impulse. Okay, so that's what a bull pullback is. Um, now, I've got trading rules, and I'm just going to go into the chart after this to take a look at it. Um, bull pullbacks, um, first of all, you need to determine what the trend is. Okay, And that's actually pretty easy. That's, that's really kind of a 40,000-foot um, view of whatever you're looking at. Uh, what I like to do is I like to establish a baseline. Okay, and, and uh, the baseline is really kind of your reference mo moving average. You can use uh, simple moving averages, EM, uh, exponential moving averages, whatever you like to do. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use a 20 simple moving average as my baseline. And then I'm going to have a reference uh, moving average, which is also an SMA. I'm going to use the 50. Okay? So what I like to uh, use to look at where a dominant trend is, is I like to see that the 20 uh, my baseline is above my reference, which is the 50. And then I like to see my 20, which is my baseline, sloping up. Um, I also like to see the price is trending up above the 20 um, simple moving average or whatever my baseline is. I know that Greg and the sauce, they use different ones like the 13 and the 48. But, you know, we're just going to use the 20 and the 50 here just to show you the um, just as an example. Okay, so the 20, uh, basically the price action moving up is pulling the 20 uh, moving average up as well. Okay, the setup is, is that the price establishes a pivot high. So you're, you're heading up and you establish a pivot high. Okay, and there's your pivot high. Um, and then it retraces. And so you might have like 10, 15, 20, whatever, many, many candles. And then you have a minimum of three candles that retrace. 
Okay, and then what the price does is it hits one or a combination of the following resistance zones, and, and the more the better. If you got a whole bunch of hits to something that converges, it's better. Okay, one is your baseline. Okay, so maybe your baseline is heading up right now, and, and now you're hitting your baseline, or or maybe there's a pivot high right here, and it hits this also at the same time. Uh, maybe you're, maybe it also hits a lower Bollinger Band. Um, maybe even better that this retracement here is somewhere right on a key Fibonacci level, which is a 38.250% or 61.8. And then what I like to see is I like to see a confirmation candle up um, after following into that resistance zone. Okay. And then I, I use a trigger, okay? So, so what I'll do is I put a contingent order on the break of the confirmation high. So if then the price breaks, that confirmation candle goes up, then I'll take a trade and I'll, I'll take it up, okay? And then hopefully it zigzags uh, a little bit more and I can, I can meet uh, and get a little bit of, pro uh, a little bit of um, profit. So let me just show you in, in, in what actually happened. Now, um, this is a trade I took. I actually took a series of two trades on Netflix. This is back in August. And I'm just going to go straight to, uh, to trading view. Um, and this is actually really kind of a fun example. Okay. Uh, yes. I got to actually get back to when it was. And you can actually, from the previous videos, I remember triangles. I actually, I actually nailed a triangle on this one. Okay. Um, the reason this whole thing came on my radar is it fell below the um, the 14 on the ADX, came onto my trigger, and I actually triggered in, and I set a target to actually exit on a close inside of this box, and I got it on that day. Okay, so already this thing is on my radar at this time. Uh, let me just take these things off. We don't need to see them. <clears throat> so Netflix is on my radar at this point. So this, this is back in August. It was a really nice trade. I, I got a, a more than a double on that one. Um, so anyway, but you know that at this point, the 20 has crossed above the 50. Okay, I've got uh, a couple of different moving averages on here. I got the 20, 50. I'm not going to, well, you can see where the 200 is. It's down there. It really doesn't matter in this for, for this particular uh, video. Okay, and I've got my Bollinger Band as well. Okay, so now it's on my radar. And there's a, there's a lot of reasons that people would take trades at this point. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. It just happened. I just I was just watching at this. I think it was more like on a holiday at that point. And if you just kind of fast forward, you can see that we've got really nice price action heading up. The 20 is definitely confirming above the 50. Well, do I want to take a trade right now? No, I don't. I really don't. What I'm doing now is I'm waiting. I'm, try, I'm being patient. I'm waiting. I want to see a little bit of a pullback. I want to see a pivot high come. And now we can say, okay, that could be a pivot high, but I need to see three candles. Okay, now we got three candles that are kind of like showing that we got a pivot low and a pivot high. So what I'll do at that point is I will put a Fibonacci on here from the most recent pivot low, which is going to be right down in here. And I'm going to put a Fib on there. And I'm going to establish a zone. A first zone that I want to watch really closely. And my first zone that I really want to watch closely on this is the 38.2. And we're going to find it. There we go. Okay, it's a 38.2 retracement. Okay, I am not ready to take a trade on this at this point. But if we happen to come down and hit that 38.2, it's going to start getting interesting for me. If we hit it, that doesn't mean I'm going to take a trade when we hit it. Okay, I'm just at this point now. I'm, that tells me, okay, on your marks, get ready. So now I'm at a get ready. Um, okay, so it comes down a little bit further. It comes down into the box. It doesn't hit the 38.2. It goes back up a little bit. Someone who's not patient would say, oh, there's my confirming candle. I'm going to take a trade if we get above this level. Okay. Um, well, it didn't correspond to my criteria here yet. 38.2, uh, the, the, the 20 moving average hasn't been hit. Well, the lower Bollinger Band, that's way down there. So that's, that's kind of like out of the question at this point. So 
Um, but, you know, they're very, very aggressive trader might say, OK, I'm going to take a trade if it goes above that. Um, I tend to be a little bit more conservative. And then we close above that. OK, we still didn't hit the 20 as far as I'm concerned. So I don't I, I, I did not take it. OK, um, now I'm starting to say, oh, shoot, maybe I should have taken it. But, you know, let's see if it goes down. Boom, it goes down and it does two things. It hits the 38.2 and it hits the 20. Now I'm in the get ready mode. Now I want to trigger. And where my trigger is going to be is the high of that candle. Okay. And I'm only going to take this at the end of the day if I've got a confirming candle that closes above that on the next day. Okay. Um, it didn't happen. I'm, st I'm still, ha I, I don't have any orders out there, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting for con confirmation. Okay. Now, boom, we hit, we hit that, but we didn't close over that. Now is when I put a contingent order in and I put a contingent order in right there. Okay. If we get price action at or above 597.15, I want to get into this trade. Okay. 597, sorry, 594, 595.44 is very close to 600. So um, there's really kind of a debate whether you should put it in there or maybe you should put it in at 601 to see if it goes above that. But I'm just going to, for, for the purposes of this video, I'm saying, okay, put the order in contingent on 595.44. It's going to trigger me an at the money call. Okay, so it's on the 22nd of September. OK, uh, that I would put the order in then and then on the 23rd, if it happens to go above that, I'm going to get triggered in. OK. At this point, I'm triggered in. And I now have a position, OK, and it's going to be an option position. Which option would I have taken? I would have looked at what that price is which is 595.44, I would have looked at what the price would be of that option if it hits, okay? So this is Netflix on the 22nd. What I would be doing is I would be choosing the expiry just after earnings. So this is actually October 19th um, is earnings. So I would be looking at the first expiry after October 19th. Okay, so I'd be, I could either take the October 22nd or I could take the October 29th. Um, probably better to take the, uh, the 22nd at this point. Okay, so I'd be taking that. And what I like to do is I like to take 30 delta options. So I'd be looking at a call. I'd be looking at my delta. And I can get a 29 delta. I can get a 31, 31 delta. Um, I'm just going to take that one right there, the uh, the 630. Okay, so and it's expensive. It's really expensive. I, I advise my swingers out there that uh, really, when you're dealing with expensive options like this, it might be better to do with the spread. But just for the for the purposes of this video, we're only going to choose that one. Okay, so I hit risk graph, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate how much that particular option is worth or will be worth if the price of Netflix hits 595.44. So at that point, you would be looking at 1220. Okay, so that, that basically tells me that the next day, I would have paid 1220 for this thing. Okay, so that would be my price of that option. Uh, because I would have been triggered in at market price when Netflix hit that price, okay? So now I just let the, let the trade run, okay? So my target always is doubling. My uh, loss, I usually position size my, my uh, trades so that I will take a 50% loss. So it's either I take a 50% loss or I take 100% gain. Um, if I've got more than one option, I usually sell half of them at the double and then let the rest go. I also will st establish various rules to get out 
Um, and uh, I'm not going to go through that here, but I'll take exit triggers based on what the moving average is doing. I won't do that here. Okay, so if you take a look at the trade and where it goes, we start consolidating a bit, then we start going up. Okay, and there's going to be a point where it starts making some really nice gains. October 5th is an example. I can, we can just look at uh, look at the back test on where it went. October 5th. And at that point, this particular option doubled. So I would be exited. I'd be gone. In fact, I was gone on this. Um, and I did make a good profit on that. So, and then I, and then basically I sell that thing. Okay. So I sell it for a double, which is 2440. Okay. And that's an automatic order. Sorry. It's not that one. It is this one. It's close. So my order got filled on this. Sell one and, uh, I got uh, 2440. So, so this is a successful trade using a bull pullback strategy. Okay. And then you can see that my trade is closed and I made $1,220. Okay. So, so that's an example of a bull pullback. Um, and at that point, you can just follow along. You can, you can actually take more pullbacks if they happen. Okay. So here's another bull pullback happening. The question is, is whether it comes down. Um, so I won't go into that. Okay. So. That's the bull pullback. The second one I wanted to talk about is the bear rally. Okay, so bear rally is exactly opposite of a bull pullback. Uh, a lot of people call this the dead cat. Okay, so but the dominant trend is down, as shown by the moving average sloping down, down. Um, and just the opposite of the bull pullback, equities usually like to correct oversold conditions, revert to the mean after strong moves before continuing with their dominant trend, which is down. Okay, Bear rallies are typically used to define price increases of 3 to 5% in a bearish trend. I see I didn't change that. Bearish. Okay, The size of the pullback, which is the zag, is always going to be smaller than the previous impulse. And oftentimes these... These, uh, these um, bear rallies, size of a bear rally, um, is going to be anywhere from 38.2 to 61.8%, which is the key fib level. Okay? And as in the, 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 uh, the bull pullback uh, trading rules, first of all, we establish the dominant trend is down. You can use any time frame, by the way. Uh, I know a lot of people, the day traders and other asset classes will do the 15 minute, or the hourly. I know that there's many day traders here and options players, um, not me being one of them, but uh, but I know that many people trade uh, the different time frames. Okay, so establish your baseline and a reference moving average. Again, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to talk about the 20 and the 50, uh, simple moving averages. Uh, so the 20 has got to be lower than the 50 and the 20 needs to be sloping down. Price needs to continue below the 20 simple moving average. Okay, the setup is, is that the price establishes a pivot low and rallies a minimum of three candles. Okay, that's the opposite of the, uh, the bull pullback. Uh, and then, so that's kind of on your marks, get ready, set, set. Okay, uh, before you go, price is going to hit one or a combination of the following resistance zones. Okay, and again, the more the better. Okay, it could hit your baseline. It can also go up to the reference line, um, the 50. Okay, um, it needs to hit maybe a previous pivot low. Um, so it goes back up to the pivot low, which is, uh, you know, support becomes resistance. Uh, maybe the upper Bollinger Band or definitely a key Fibonacci level. 38.250 or 61. Yeah, I look for those convergence zones and those are where I start getting interested. So that's kind of the get ready, get set, or on your marks, get ready. And, and now we need to find the get set. The get set is going to be the confirmation candle. And then the, the trigger is going to be a contingent order on the break of the confirmation candle low. Okay. So I'll give you another example. Uh, this goal also goes back to August 2021. I did not take this. Um, I was actually already in a position that was bearish. 
Um, but uh, also make sure you know that you've got to be patient. You can't force these things. Just wait. Put, stack the odds in your favor. Okay, so let's look at beyond. Okay, beyond. And we go back to August. Uh, let's see. i got to go back. i got to find it. You can probably see it here. Okay. And actually, you can look at this and see some commonality of my first two videos. Okay. We just had a crossover on July 28th. We had a crossover of the, um, the 20 and the 50. Okay. We got earnings coming up. That doesn't mean I'm in a trade here, but if you look at this, this is almost like a triangle or certainly a basing type of pattern. Okay. And you really get into that base uh, leading up to earnings and you've got actually a really interesting pattern that I'm not going to take usually on these things because you got earnings coming, but you've got some kind of basing pattern or certainly you've got a, uh, well, you certainly potentially have a triangle there as well. Okay. So I generally don't take those right before earnings. Okay. But now we're going to get earnings. Okay. And we've got a interesting candle on earnings. We've got a gap down and a bearish and er, sorry, bullish engulfing. Okay. But we're still in a bearish trend because we have our 20 below our 50 and we have our 20 that is sloping down. Okay. So now at this point I say, okay, what is the FIP? Where's, where, where could this go? I take a look at the pivot high, which is right there. I throw a FIB on that and I start watching it. Okay. Well, it came up to 38.2. Now, if we get a bearish candle, I might be interested, but I'd, I'd really be interested if we hit the 20 and the 61.8. <clears throat> so now it goes up. It goes up a lot. It's like, ooh, okay. Well, maybe I need to change my prognosis. You know, are we gonna are we gonna actually go up? Are we gonna reverse trend? Well, I don't know. Let's. Well, maybe I need to redraw my Fibonacci. These things are fluid. Now I draw my Fibonacci and I say, okay, this is interesting. This is really interesting because I have a 38.2 and I have the upper Bollinger Band. It's convergence of two of my criteria. So now I have a zone that if we hit there and then we have the confirmation, then I might want to say, yep, this was a bull pullback. Okay, so... And that's exactly what happened. We hit the Bollinger Band and we hit 38.2. At this point, what I would do is I would put an order in contingent on the price action surpassing that. Okay, so I would put a, a contingent order in to, to sell, <clears throat> or actually I would put a contingent order to buy puts at market if the price of BYND hits 126 13 and 13 cents okay so that's that's how much this is okay 126 13. okay i'd use a 30 delta i would use an option that is about 45 days out what does it do okay i get filled okay so now at this point i am in a put or puts and I'm going for as much as I can get. My loss potential is going to be 50% of what my, my uh, position is. And I am going to take my profit at 100%. If I'm in more than one option, I will take my profit at 100% on half of what I have. And I'll let the rest run until I see some kind of reason to get out. Okay. So where does it go? Well, we are successful. Okay, so, um, you know, the big question is, how much did we make? Okay, so guys, it goes a little slow, but with options, as you know, <clears throat> we, can, we can double up our money very, very, very quickly. So the move that we had on this particular one was um, 
down to this level was a that's an $11 move. Uh, I can bet that the option itself doubled. Okay, so that's that's the uh, that is the the uh, the bull pullback dead cat bounce for a uh, for a uh, a bull bull pullback uh, type of price action. Okay, so hopefully it's understandable. It works really well. This is this is along with triangles. I love trading these things, but I'm very very conservative as far as what I take, and I get out very quickly if it shows that it's not going to actually work out. Okay, um, so let me just look real quickly. I think I identified a couple of current case studies that we can take a look at. Um, going to look at first the bear. Actually, I'll be honest, there's not a lot of bull pullback strong candidates right now. We've been in downtrends, and I think we're probably going to continue going in downtrends. There's a lot more bear rally. Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, bull pullback types of opportunities. There's not very many bear rallies. Uh, I'm sorry, there's not very many bull pullbacks. There's a lot more uh, bear rallies. But the one thing <clears throat> I'm going to show actually is Bitcoin. Okay, so this is the daily chart of Bitcoin. Um, actually, it's uh, this is a CFD that I trade. Um, in, it's another asset class that I trade. And you can see that <clears throat> we've already had some bear rallies. Um, and we potentially can be in another bear rally. Okay, so we've got our 20 below the 50. And what I would be doing at this point, or actually I have to, I've just deleted it, is I'm going to put a fib on that recent pivot high to right here, and I'm going to establish my zone. Okay. Well, my zone actually is the 38.2. Okay. We've hit the 38.2, but we've not hit my key moving average. I would prefer to see Bitcoin come up and touch that and then confirm back down. At that point, I would be willing to take a trade down. Okay, so um, we'll see what happens with it. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it might reverse. I mean, we can be wrong. Um, and if we are wrong with these things, you know, we just have to exit and take our loss, and take it on the chin. It's just the way it is. Okay, um, I do have a bull pullback watch list as well. And these are some of the things that I'm watching. <clears throat> Not even close to having a, a, a trade uh, on the get ready. Okay, these are just on my kind of my radar, what I'm watching. You can see that uh, Caterpillar is one of them. Uh, Caterpillar has, uh, has uh, broken out a little bit. Okay, the 20 is above the 50, and I would be looking for uh, a move down, tapping this. Okay, I don't even know where to put the fib because we haven't shown a pivot high yet. Okay, so Caterpillar is on my watch list. If we reversed a little bit, came down, and then pulled back up, I'd be willing to take this thing long. Uh, Cisco is another one. Cisco's maybe a little closer, um, and if we do get a pullback, into this zone you can see that zone also is the is a pivot high and the 38.2 and in this case the reference moving average which is the 50 would be coming down so if we came down into this region showed a little bit of confirming candle up i'd be looking at taking this thing up i don't think it's ready yet but on a confirming candle i would be willing to take that thing up so that's 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 another um, potential candidate. Um, here's another one. Uh, not really strong, but uh, if uh, if we consolidate a little bit, you can see that our 20 is above the 50, but we're starting to slope down. Okay, so if we consolidate a little bit um, in this region, kind of in the in that region, so kind of like a base a basing pattern. Uh, combined with the bear rally, I'm sorry, bull pullback, and the 50 and the 50 comes up into this region, then at that point it might be ripe for uh, uh, you know ready, get set, go type of uh, situation. Uh, USO, so oil is an, another one of those. Okay, so I'm, I'm watching this. We have a pivot high established, so now it's going to be. Where is the 20 going to go? If we get a pivot high 
and a little bit of a pullback, does that correspond to a FIB? Okay, so it's another thing that I'm watching. So none of these have any trades imminent to me. Maybe PG has a little bit more uh, than, than the other ones, uh, but they're definitely on my watch list. Okay, and you can, you can establish the same types of watch lists. Kind of watch them, be patient, just be patient. Uh, you know, on the, the Caterpillar, I forgot to mention that we got a pivot high up there. So, you know, it would really kind of be one of these come back down, meet the ten, meet the either the 20 or the 50 and then start going back up. OK, so hopefully this is this is useful. Um, you know, I like to get these uh, these uh, these patterns that I watch out there. Um, as, as I mentioned, the uh, the trading rules are really kind of the same for both. Um, the bear rally is really kind of where I'm watching the for the most opportunities right now, unless we see a, uh, a reversal, get your dominant trend down. That's where the, where the trend is really right now. Um, you know, follow the rules that, uh, you know, with, with your moving averages, it can be different from mine. Uh, use what you feel most comfortable with. Um, after you get a pivot low, and we get a little bit of a rally of at least three candles. Maybe it's ten candles, three candles, um, and then the price hits one or one or a combination of the resistance zones of either your baseline, maybe your um, your reference line, um, previous pivot low, um, upper Bollinger Band, or even better yet, the uh, the key Fibonacci level. I like to have at least two on here, but uh, sometimes you only get one. And if I'm going to get one, it's usually going to be the uh, the twenty moving average. Confirm it out and then take your trade after confirmation, uh, confirmation, be conservative. Okay. So again, uh, we are, uh, we're actually five instructors here now. Uh, you've got the HT, uh, uh, HT is on here as well. Um, I'll have to get that on here, but uh, you can contact myself, Greg, uh, Trax, or Steve as well uh, for any questions or comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and, uh, you know, put it in your library. Use it as a reference uh, to, uh, to start establishing some of your own rules and your own trade plans. Take care, everyone.